Shalom, 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 brothers and sisters. Back again with another part to the series of When Will the End Be? And today is part nine to it. And it's going to be about, um, let's read it. It's going to be about, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. That's what we're going to have a Bible topic, Bible study about today. So without further ado, as usual, let's do our Shema and say our Lord's Prayer. And we're going to dive right into the lawlessness. Part nine. Everybody stretch their hands ready to receive. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Haya Nawa Ahaya Akar. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Abba Shaba Shemayam, Kodesh Haya Shemka, Ahaya Malakwatka, Daba'a, Ratazam Wanka Haya Isha, Ba Arataza, Kawa Haya, Ba Shemayam, Nathanla Nawa, Lakham Ka Wayam, Wa Salaknawa, Chawafwa Naya, Ka Salaknawa, Chawafwa Ya Nawa, Walaa, Daba'aya Nawa, Ba Nas Wayam, Abal, Hawashnawa, Manra, Kaya, Lakka, Ha, Malakwath, Wa, Ha, Allah, Wa, Ha, Ta, Parath, La, Alanyam, Aman. All right. So diving right into the series here, we only have two left. Today is part nine to the series, and it is about, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And it doesn't take a lot to figure out what we mean about that because you just cut on the news. The love is growing colder and colder and colder every day for one another. All right, so this series started off as the three questions that the disciples asked Christ, Yahushua, on the Mount of Olives. Let's go back to uh, Matthew chapter 24 is what we're breaking down here. The questions and the signs that Yahushua told the disciples what's going to happen when will the end be. So let's start off as a recap, as we do every week. Let's start off by reading chapter 24 and verse 3. And it says, Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when will the end be? That's the first question. And what will be the sign of your coming? That's the second. And the third is, and the end of the age. All right. So let's go through them. Uh, verse four. And Yahushua answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceive you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ or I am he. And will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nations and kingdom against kingdoms. And there will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places. And these, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then you will deliver, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by nations for my namesake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will arise up and deceive many. And because of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. Part nine is where we are today. A couple of those we put together in the series. Today is part nine of the series. Matthew 24 and verse 12. And as usual, um, I got commentary that i like you guys to follow with me. I'm going to dive right in so it won't be too, too lengthy here. When will the end be? The breakdown of Matthew 24. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Part nine to the series. Two more to go. All right, let's start with our first bullet point here. And it says, let's start off by reading 1 John 3 and 4. First precept of the day. Now I'm going to switch back and forth from the New King James to my Hebrew Aramaic Bible, study Bible. So let's turn, if you will, with me to 1 John 
chapter 3 and verse 4. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. One moment. Give me one minute to get here. Let's take a look at 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Let's start off by reading it. We're going to set the tone today of what we mean about lawlessness. All right. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Here we go. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4 reads, Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is lawlessness all right so now we got the definition of lawlessness it's pretty simple brothers and sisters it's called sin all right first precept of the day first john chapter 3 and verse 4 what is lawlessness lawlessness is sin all right so now that we understand this part, let's keep reading. The word translated lawlessness comes from the Greek word anomia. All right, let's take a look at that in the Strong's Concordance here. G, Strong's number G458. One moment. And let's read the characteristics of lawlessness. G458 in the Strong's. One moment. Here we go. Let's pull it up and let's read it here. All right. Back to the top here. So this is what we have. Let's listen to the pronunciation. Strong's G458. Anamia. 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 Anamia is what we mean here. Now, I may not have had the sound there. So let me stop it here for a minute and let's, let's get it together. All right. I want you to hear the pronunciation of the word, anamia. All right, so now, now let's do it again. One moment. Strong's G458, anamia, anamia. Anamia. So now, lawlessness comes from the Greek word anamia. So now that we know how to pronounce it, let's get down into the definition of it. All right? The Bible usage outline. I or one, the condition of without law, lawlessness. A, because ignorant of it. B, because of violating it. Or number two, contempt of violation of the law, iniquity, wickedness. Now we all know that iniquity is meaning here sin wickedness is sin so the greek word anomia is broke down into what the condition without law lawlessness all right so let's go down and read a little bit more about it all right number one the condition of one without law here we go again lawlessness either because of ignorant of it or because violating it. Number two, contempt and violation of law, iniquity, wickedness. All right, so now that we have set the tone of today's Bible study, today we're studying Matthew 24 and verse 12. When will the end be? And this was one of the signs that Christ gave the disciples on the Mount of Olives to look for before the second coming, before the end of age. And what would be the signs? This was one of them, lawlessness. And we're gonna dive right in to what we got going on today, to the commentary. One moment, let's get back to the commentary here. So now that we understand what lawlessness is, is lawlessness, anomia in the Greek, is sin. A person without the law. All right, so let's back up and let's read it again. The word translated lawlessness comes from the Greek word anomia. Strong's number G458, which means an utter disregard for Yah and his laws. From this Greek word, we also get the word 
Anti-nominalism. Anti-nominalism. Okay? Which is the belief that there is no moral laws that Yah expects followers to obey. Now, you can look at the first part of that word and see anti. That's the prefix, the anti, which means not a belief. No moral laws that Yah expects followers to obey. Every sin is a transgression against Yah because sin violates his moral standard for human living. I like everybody to pay attention today to this Bible study, lawlessness and the love of many will grow cold. This is a very good topic and it's very relevant today because colder and colder are people getting. Let's read on. Since Yah created us, Genesis 1 and 27, he has the right to define boundaries for us. So now let's take a minute. This is called Bible study, dissecting, dissecting the word, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. See, you can take all these precepts and put them together and pray and ask the most high for what? Wisdom and understanding to take in what you're reading. So now, Yah is our creator, Genesis Chapter 1 and verse 27. Let's take a minute and turn there. First book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. One moment. Let's read it. Verse 27. Now listen to this. So God created man in his own image. In the image of Yah, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So there's no other question that Yah is our creator. And don't you think if he created us, we should abide by his rules. He is our father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be his name. You see, back to the commentary. So now that we know what lawlessness is, it's sin. Genesis 1, chapter 1 and verse 27, he has the right to define boundaries for us because what? Yah is our creator, okay? Any violation of those boundaries is a violation of his law, which means that every sin is an act of lawlessness because that's what sin is. It is lawlessness. That person who... Who, who who sin, sin, and just sin and sin is, law, is a lawless person. He's not willing to, he or she is not willing to abide by the rules that our creator made for us to abide by. Okay, second bullet point. Got a lot of precepts today. Scripture makes a distinction between someone who sins as we all do. So a person may say, well, I don't sin. We all do. And the precept is going to prove the point. Let's turn to Romans chapter three. Verse and let's read verse nine through 18. If a person says they don't sin, they're full of lies because we all have sinned and come short of Yah's glory. We all have. There was only one person, one perfect being that walked this earth, and that was Christ himself. All right. So getting up and leading to the point of the lawlessness, we know that it's sin. Second bullet point. Now we're talking about to make a distinction between someone who sins and we all do it. So let's go to the precept. Romans chapter three. And let's read verses nine through 11. And it reads. What then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged the Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. Number 10, as it is written. Let me pull this down here. As it is written. 
There is none righteous. No, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after Yah. They all have turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. Verse 13. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of apps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of Yah before their eyes. Now, if you look at today's society, you will see that this precept is all but true. People have no moral concepts anymore at all. Anything goes. What's evil is proclaimed to be good now. And now what is good is proclaimed to be evil. You see, Yahushua already said that this would happen. Lawlessness will abound and the love of many will grow cold. This is our Bible study today, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get it in. Let's get this knowledge and learn because the most I said, our people perish from a lack of knowledge. So let that not be the reason why we perish because we don't have the knowledge of what lawlessness is and what sin is. All right. Another precept. So if a person says they hasn't sinned, it's a lie. We all have fallen short of Yah's glory. We all have sinned. Let's turn to 1 John chapter 1 and let's read verses 8 through 10. So if a person says they haven't sinned, it's a lie and the truth is not in them. 1 John chapter 1 and let's read verses 8 through 10. All right, I'll give you a minute to get there. All right, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. You see that? Now listen closely to this precept. Because there was only one good that walked this earth and it was Christ. Verse 8. If we say that we have, have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. It's pretty much self-explanatory. But here's the key to it when you read verse 9. If we confess our sins, you see, if you confess it, if you humble yourself and you confess your sins, the next part says he, which is a capital H, and it's the most high. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, lawlessness equals sin. Sin equals transgression of the law. You see, lawlessness is a person that does not abide by the law. You see, the world has put a set of laws out here. If you do this and this, you go to jail or you pay a fine because you what? Went against the law. But the main law that's more important than the worldly law is the law that our creator set for us. All right, let's get into it. A little bit at a time, we're going to break down this lawlessness and the love of many growing cold. All right. So scripture makes a distinction between someone who sins as we all do. So now we pulled out two precepts saying that we all sin. First John is letting us know we have sin, but what do you do? Confess your sin and he will be faithful and just to forgive you from all unrighteousness. And someone who practices lawlessness. Now, this is a very important precept here. Let's turn to Matthew. 
chapter 7 and verse 23. Let's take a look at this precept here. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 23. Let's bring it out. Let's bring out the precept. Today, when will the end be? Part 9 to the series is what? The love of many going cold and lawlessness will abound. We're going to touch on the lawlessness first. So, someone who practiced lawlessness. Let's read what happens to those people. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 23. Let's pull out the precept upon precept, line upon line. And let's take a minute to read it. Verse 23. Listen up, folks. Chapter 7 of Matthew. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Now, this is Christ saying, I never knew you. He says, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Can you imagine the feeling on that day when the judge, which is Yahushua HaMashiach, tells you to depart from him, you who practice lawlessness, devastating you see how sin how sin aka lawlessness aka transgression of the law you see what it'll get you in some deep trouble let's get there one precept at a time precept upon precept line upon line this is how we learn so if you ignorant to the fact of what lawlessness is equals sin, this precept right here tells you what happens on judgment. They depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Let's pull out another precept upon precept. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13. And let's read verses 41 and 42. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 13, verse 41 and 42. Let's pull it out. Matthew 13, 41 and 42. Here it is. 41. The Son of Man will send out his angels. I want to make sure you get this precept here. Because this one puts a stamp when he says, depart from me. 7 and 23, go back a little bit further into the precepts, into the scriptures, to chapter 13, and this is what, this is what happens, chapter, verse 41, the Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, here's the word again, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. Do you see how serious lawlessness, sin, and transgression of the law is? Lawlessness equals eternal death. Pretty much. This is what we're talking about today. And lawlessness is running rampant, not only in the U.S., but all over the world. And the Messiah already said that that was one of the signs of his return and that it would happen. Let's get into it some more. So Matthew 7 and 23, what does it say? Depart from me, ye who do iniquity. Depart from me, ye who practice lawlessness. I knew you not. Later on in the scriptures, the precept says, the son of man will send out his angels to gather what belongs to him. If you practice lawlessness, you won't be gathered. You see? You're going to be stay here to be tormented and then thrown in the lake of fire for eternity. Just knowing that is enough for me to get my act together and keep it there. I don't know about you guys, but I'm gonna teach this 
very well today. Shema, O Israel, the Lord our Yah is one. And what he says, he means. All right, let's keep reading. Here we go. A lawless person is one who has given himself or herself over completely to a sinful lifestyle. Lawless people either do not believe in Yah or refuse to acknowledge his rights to, to rule their lives. Now, let's turn to Psalms chapter 14 and verse 1. Lawless people either do not believe in Yah or refuse to acknowledge his rules, his rights to rule their lives. Psalms 14 and 1. Let's turn to it. Psalms chapter 14 and verse 1. So now it's either or. Either they don't believe in Yah or they refuse to acknowledge his rights to rule over their lives. Now he has the right because he created us in his image. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. He has the right. Let's pull out the precept on it. Psalms chapter 14 and verse 1. Now listen to this. Verse 1 says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no Yah. There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. It's a fool who says there is no God. Well, where did we come from? We didn't come out of caves. We didn't come from fish, as I've heard some people say. We didn't come from animals. We were, cre we were created in the image of God, in the image of our Elohim, in the image of our Yah. What an insult to say that what he created came from a fish. See that? Ignorance. You perish from a lack of knowledge. Be careful who you follow with the information. Follow the precepts, brothers and sisters. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. Let's get back to it. And let's read that one more time. 27. It says, so Yah created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female. He didn't create coming from a fish. We don't look like fish. We were created in the image of Yah. So only a fool would say there is no God. How do you think you got here? Back to the commentary. When will the end be? The breakdown of Matthew 24 and today we're touching on lawlessness. Let's skip on to the next bullet point. Those who persist in lawlessness will not inherit the kingdom of Yah. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9 and 10. Galatians 5, 20 and 21. Now let me tell you something. A lot of ministers don't want to touch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9 and 10. But Yah's word is true and he mean what he say. You see, those who practice lawlessness will not inherit the kingdom. You will not take a part in the kingdom. Well, let's read the precept. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's pull it out. Not what I say. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Here's another one. We read precepts around here. Not what I think, but it's what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9 reads, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Question mark. Do not be deceived. Now listen to these. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals. See, because people don't want to touch that. Nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, 
not extortioners, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do you see? You see what I mean? All of these are what? Sin equals what? Lawlessness equals what? Transgression of the law. Let's pull out another precept. Let's pull out another precept here. Let's pull out Galatians chapter 5, 20 and 21. And let's read it. So now all of those things are seen that we just read. Lawlessness. The people that's practicing these lawlessness acts will not inherit the kingdom of Yah. Galatians 5, 20 and 21. Let's see what Galatians says. One moment. Galatians chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. Now, Let's start with verse 19 so that we can get a better understanding. We can cover it all. Let's start with verse 19. 19 reads, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissension, heresies, Envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Yah. All of these that we just named are sins with an S lawlessness transgression of the law you will not inherit the kingdom so those that are practicing lawlessness and it's running abound and the love of men has grown cold if they don't repent and change they will not inherit the kingdom of Yah Lawlessness equals sin. Strong's number G458. Anemia in the Greek. A person without law. Less means without law. Less. Let's bring it on. Not done yet. Just getting started. These are all facts. These are all precepts. Yahushua warned that in the end time, lawlessness will increase and the love of many will grow cold. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. When an attitude of lawlessness takes over the atmosphere, people stop wondering about right and wrong. They no longer know or care that absolute more standards exist. Lawless people may consider themselves very religious and spiritual, but they have defined Yah as they wish him to be, not as he really is. So now you got to ask yourself, if we go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9 and 10, and these are the people that he said will not inherit the kingdom of Yah. And these are sins. These are the people that practice lawlessness. You see what I mean? It's time to repent. Return to the law. Return to the Ten Commandments that he gave Moses on Mount Sinai written by the finger of our creator himself. And there's actually 613 statues in the Bible that we have to abide by. And we're gonna have a Bible study on some of those. 613 is an awful lot of them. 
You see? So you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, fornicators. These are all the people that's having sex before marriage. People that you call AKA dating. You see? Idolaters. Are you worshiping something other than your creator? You practicing lawlessness. Adulterers. Are you having extramarital activi activities behind your, your spouse's back? They, he or she may not know, but the most high does. You see, these characteristics and these things and these sins that I'm naming, everybody has done at least one of them. Repent, turn, and change. The lawlessness that's going on just in America is absolutely ridiculous but christ spoke about it and as usual i always always have a few visuals for you you know give you a video a visual for you can so you can understand in your mind what's really happening here it's called bible prophecy coming to life folks this bible was written over 2,500 years ago, when Christ walked the earth and he said that these things were going to happen and he left. Matthew chapter 4, chapter 24, verse 12 says, what? Lawlessness will abound, which means it's going to be running rapid and the love of many going to grow. The love is not there no more. People just don't care about one another anymore and it comes from the spirit of the antichrist an antichrist spirit has hit this earth already so now as usual let's take a visual break everybody let's take a visual break and let's just look at some of the things that's going on in Chicago alone. Just in Chicago alone. And the, these major cities. It's, it's stunning to see. It's stunning to hear. And it makes you drop your head. But guess what? Christ said that this was going to happen. Let's roll the video here. I got a few short ones that I, I just want to bring to your attention today because this is very important. All right. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12 says, lawlessness will abound and the love of many will grow cold. Listen up to this, this visual here. So let's bring in Tommy Laren, host of No Interruption on Fox Nation and Geraldo Rivera, Fox News correspondent at large. Hi, Welcome to both of you. Hi. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, th this, this is a horrific situation and every weekend we see more shootings across the nation so today moments ago in the white house briefing room jen Psaki was asked what's the president's reaction to this he hasn't talked about it a whole lot um, and here's what she said i'm not going to get ahead of uh his comments or remarks um later this week um but uh, it is an area where the president feels uh, a lot, a great deal of the crime we're seeing as a result of gun violence. I ex you can expect he'll speak to that uh, and his commitment to continuing to address gun violence and gun safety uh, in the country. Hmm. All right. So apparently we're going to hear something from the president on this. And I would just mention before going uh, to you, to you both, um, Keisha Lance uh, Bottoms in the mayor in Atlanta said, you know, it's, it's partly just a COVID reopening problem because she says her city reopened too soon. All right. So now let's take a minute. I'm going to bring this to your attention and look at the statistics at the bottom here. 2021, this was just aired last year. Murders are up in NYC, Chicago, and LA, Atlanta, and Houston. Now, can you imagine where the numbers are now? This was last year. All right, so look at the clips at the bottom, the statistics at the bottom, and also watch the video rotate. 
COVID reopening problem because she says her city reopened too soon. And that's the reason that they're seeing so much crime. Tommy, what do you say? How? Minneapolis, up 77%. What? 77% crime is up. This was in 2021. We have some recent visuals, but I wanted to start off with this one. This was a year ago. Roll tape. Blissfully ignorant are these Democrats. They blame our Second Amendment rights, law-abiding Americans who exercise their Second Amendment rights, going after gun control, talking about guns, and then they go after a reopening, allowing businesses and allowing people to go on and live their normal lives. They blame those two factors, but they this don't blame the defund folks. the police movement that the Democrats have been placating for the last year and a half or more in these cities led by Democrats that have defunded or otherwise reallocated or shorted their police departments. That's where you're seeing homicides rise. That's where you're seeing a culture of lawlessness. There's a certain segment of Americans who have watched this unfold. They know that there are no consequences. If consequences exist at all, they're going to be small consequences. You're yeah. seeing in New York City looters not being charged after what happened last summer. The message is being sent out. You can do whatever you want. The police are outnumbered. They can't do much, if anything, to you if you are caught in your crimes. And so this is what happens yeah. when the inmates run the prison. You know, it, I mean, Geraldo, it, it does feel like that. It feels like it's it's a little bit of a no-go zone in some of these places. You look at what's going on in Washington Square Park in New York, and, you know, let me put up the pictures of the two uh, DAs. You've got um, Darcel Clark in the Bronx and Cyrus Vance Jr., who happens to be spending a lot of his focus on uh, tax charges that he's trying to cultivate against uh, President Trump. Meanwhile, though, they say, you know what, we're not going to prosecute what happened in the riots in New York City where people broke the windows, took all the merchandise out, ran away with it. They stole cars and, you know, drove them all around the city and, you know, perpetrated more crimes. Well, listen to this. This is Jessica Betancourt. She's a New York City business owner. Watch this. I think it's just disgusting. It's outrageous the way we're getting treated. No one made an effort to even come to the stores and say, you know what, can I get some surveillance? Can I get some fingerprinting um, to see if we could catch these looters? No efforts were made by the city. No efforts made by the city to prosecute any of these 400 some people, Geraldo. Martha, that's the office where I began my legal career. My daughter, Simone, followed me in that New York DA's office. Uh, you know, they say they're overwhelmed with COVID cases because the courts were closed, and yet they're still investigating, as you mentioned, Trump on these lame tax charges. They're dropping uh, other charges against the 2020, uh, June 2020 looters. Why are they dropping those charges? Because the kids who stole and burned were protesting the death of George Floyd. I mean, that's absolutely baloney. You can't pick and choose. Laws must be upheld equally. Shame on the grown-ups who justify lawlessness. Those weren't protesters. They were crooks. You have yeah. all these deaths everywhere. There's a ghetto civil war. Murder is the number one cause of death for young black men in America. It is the civil rights issue, Martha, of our time. You know, w if you don't prosecute these kinds of crimes, it simply sends the message that it's okay, right? You, you can do it. You can do whatever you want. Now, I'm going to correct Geraldo. There's no way that all of these people that were looting were just black. That's a lie. So I'm going to correct him, even if he don't correct himself. Because there was of all races looting. Rotate. And then you look at a different level of this, Washington Square Park in New York. And, of course, we've got a mayor's race ongoing here. And I don't know if there's any indication that anybody really has the spine to crack down on this. I guess we'll see what happens. But, but the, the people who are hanging out uh, at these rave parties in Washington Square Park say, we're going to be here every single day, just like the police are. We are, too, because this is as much our home as it is other residents have to live here. If you can't accept the fact that I'm living within my First Amendment constitutional rights, then, my friend, you're living in the wrong country and democracy is not for you. Uh, they tried curfews in the park, Tommy, um, but none of that has worked to sort of restore some kind of, you know, peaceful environment in this part of New York. They have free reign. 
And this isn't just the defund the police movement that we've seen over the last year and a half. This is also can be attributed to a lot of the policies on the book, a lot of the bad public policies. When you have felon coddling policies, when you have crime reclassification, when you have cashless bail, when you have reduced sentencing, of course, people are looking and saying, why can't I just do what I want? And then add on to that that you can pass it off as justice or you can get out of get out of jail free card quite literally if you say that you are being oppressed or you are being in some way this is a product of racism then you feel as though you can do whatever you want but it's not just happening in inner cities it's not just happening in areas that were already rough neighborhoods this is happening in Atlanta and places like Buckhead this is coming to a city a suburb near you and people are going to start to understand what it looks like when social media hashtags become yeah. public policy it's dangerous and reckless yeah I want to finish and get one uh, last thought from you Geraldo if I may this is James Craig, the former De Detroit police chief, um, on Sunday morning with Maria, I believe. Watch this. Hey, let me just start by saying that our profession is in a crisis right now. Some of the mayors in these cities are failing miserable. Let's look at Chicago. Uh, Lori Lightfoot talks about what's dangerous. The cops are dangerous. No, she's dangerous. We can talk about the failed leadership, uh, but where's the support for the men and women? This anti-police rhetoric, it is not a surprise that police officers are leaving in large numbers. Yeah. Uh, Geraldo, the support for the men and women is gone. And we all know that President Trump showed great support for law enforcement across this country. We also know that there have been some very tragic incidences that have happened across the country. But now you've got a situation where if he, they feel like nobody has their back, what do you think President Biden needs to say to law enforcement in this country? that defund the police was the stupidest social movement of our time. Uh, to take the, uh, the guns out of the hands of the cops or to take their, uh, uh, their community support away was appalling. You have now uh, the opposite is happening, though. I see, Martha, I see a comeback. Uh, the class, the recruitment class and the police academy now over 14,000. Uh, it's a record. Many minorities are signing up. The community is coming back to the cops. Eric Adams, the former police captain, is the leading candidate in tomorrow's mayoral race. Uh, the people of New York have gone from defund the police and take a billion dollars out of their budget to support the police. Law and order is the most important issue of this time, Martha. Well, uh, I hope you're right. I hope you're right for this city and for cities across the nation um, because it, it, this is out of control. Out of control. Thank God those two kids are okay. But I think that that image should stay in everybody's mind across this country about how rampant and how, um, you know, people feel like they can get away with whatever they want right now. Geraldo, thank you. Tommy, thank you. Thank Good you. To Lawlessness will abound. The people's using, of course, the racism to commit these crimes. The Most High, Yahusha, Christ, said that this was going to happen. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. The love of many has grown cold. lawlessness you see so they put this out here defund the police this is bible prophecy folks coming to life right before your eyes isn't that something that you can open up your instruction manual and find out what's going on before it even happens now let's roll tape I got a couple of visuals here. Let me share another one with you. One moment. I'm going to share another one with you uh, here. Pay attention to this one. This is about uh, the lawlessness in Chicago. I believe they're number one now. All right. One moment here. Let's get back over here. Let me share this with you. It Lawlessness is running so rapid in Chicago that the mayor has resigned. She don't know what to do. It's Bible prophecy. It's nothing she can do. Christ said that this was going to happen. And he said that this was one of the signs of his return. Let's share this video here. Rotate. Listen to this. Joining us now, the National Vice President of the Returnal Order of Police. He's Joe Gamaldi. Hey, Joe, it's always great to have you on. By the way, congratulations on National Police Week. Joe, we're going to show this wild video out of Chicago, a mob of teenagers rampaging on the tops of city buses and cars, and it happened just blocks away from the Illinois governor mansion. No arrests made. What do you think of this? 
Oh, it's terrible, Liz. You know, what we're seeing is just a complete culture of lawlessness in this country. And it's thanks to woke politicians who have literally destroyed our criminal justice system. And in addition to that video, we had two mass shootings in Chicago over the weekend with 12 people shot. And a disturbing video out today where someone shot on the sidewalk and there's a little child with his backpack running away, just trying to get home safe. And the sad part is, we don't have to live like this. We have idiotic politicians like Mayor Lightfoot, who, who by the way, is tweeting out a call to arms over a SCOTUS decision, decision. Meanwhile, she presides over a veritable war zone. I mean, my God, the irony of it all. I, I mean, she's incredibly and disgustingly out of touch with her community. She's a disgrace to Chicago, and she frankly resigned. And there's this tiny little ice cream shop in the San Francisco Bay Area. It was hit with a uh, Black Lives Matter defund the police protest when they had an ice cream with a cop event. This is the, in Richmond, the Richmond neighborhood. So you see these protests breaking out on, on the spur of a moment. And then you've got Americans, they're trying to show their support for cops nationwide, but we still see poli you know, the push for defunding police. Policing is way more dangerous since 2020. Joe, isn't this reversing improvements we saw since the 90s? Yeah, absolutely, Liz. I mean, here we are trying to reach out to the community. We have protesters showing up. The community is trying to support us. We're trying to bridge the gap. But I don't think people have any idea of just how bad the violence is against law enforcement. We're about to have our police week ceremonies this weekend. We're adding 563 names to that monument of officers who have lost their lives. Families ripped apart. Since 2021 when? 2021 was the deadly was the deadliest year for law enforcement in 20 years. We've had 132 police officers shot already this year. Okay. That's outpacing last year's historic numbers. It's not slowing down, and ambush attacks are up 30% against us. T talk about the 500 number you just said. What is that number for and since when? Now listen to this. It's not just the people that's practicing lawlessness. It's also the police practicing lawlessness. You see, it's not just people. The cops are doing the same. Some of them, not all of them. Just wanted to make that point there. Roll tape. That is for 2021. We have 563 officers who were murdered in the, uh, killed in the line of duty. That could be gunfire, knives, traffic accidents, COVID-related deaths. Every single one of those is a family that's going to have to recover from that. And I, I just don't understand right now what we're doing in this country. That's not the leading story on all yeah. these news networks. And, you know, I, I thank you, Liz, for covering this and Fox and Fox Business. But where are the rest of the networks to cover the increase in violence against law enforcement? This is a complete stain on our society. This is horrific. And yet it's not even getting coverage. It's embarrassing. It's disgusting. We need to make sure that this is front and center for everybody to understand that law enforcement is under attack in this country. Yeah. We have academics and politicians who sit their ass safely behind a desk telling me my... And so are the people under attack. So it's just not 123 law enforcement officers shot in the line of duty year to day. They've killed a lot too. They're lawless, and the people are lawless. Just because they have a badge doesn't make them, you know, different from everyone else. They still practice in lawlessness. Some of them, they're human. They're human beings. Rotate. My job's not dangerous while I'm out there on the street. And, you know, you're right. I mean, the cops are confronting COVID-19 and getting sick themselves. Let's listen to what Nassau County Police Commissioner Patrick Ryder had to say about what's going on on Fox. He said this on Fox and Friends. Watch this. The two memorials that I go to will sit here in Albany and sit in Washington, D.C., the same place where our lawmakers are supposed to be writing laws that protect the people, protect law enforcement. But instead, they're writing laws that are protecting the bad guy. And that's the problem we have today in policing. That's the problem we have when, it, when you look at law and order around the country. They're all suffering because if you're not backing me and you're not going to defend me, why am I going to come to work? And that's why you see a decrease in those that want to be cops around the country. Yeah, uh, Joe, what he just said, can you explain and give more color and, and enlighten us more about that, about how the defund the police movement and weak on crime prosecutors and policies is impacting the force? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just take Harris County, for example, the third largest county in the country located in Texas. They had bail reform, which cost $100 million. We just got statistics out. 80% of people ain't showing up for their court dates. We have rogue DAs across the country who are cutting sweetheart deals for violent repeat offenders. I'm not talking about the guy who steals a candy bar at the grocery store. I'm talking about the people who are shooting people. We should be seeking the maximum and throwing the book at them. We but, perpetuated this culture of lawlessness, and now we're seeing police officers shot left and right. right but, and I certainly hope that the politicians who show up and pat us on the back are going to follow up with some legislation to protect police how officers. How much are police retirements and police resignations up? Yeah, nationwide retirements are up 45 percent. Resignations are up 20%, and our recruitment is absolutely tanking. Chicago saw an 83% reduction in applications. New Jersey saw a 90%. I mean, I don't think it's hyperbole for me to say to you, Liz, that our profession is dying off. This is not lawlessness on both parties' part. We've seen where the police is, are killing people, people are killing police. It's lawlessness. We're not looking at the groups. We're looking at what's happening and what the Most High inspired Matthew the right. Yahusha said that this would be one of the signs towards the end, the end of the age, and the sign of his second coming. Cops are killing people unlawfully and people kill, killing cops people killing people take away the cops things you see what i'm saying it's lawlessness now what is the cause of all of this lawlessness why let's get down into it let's get down into the cause of why there's a lot of lawlessness and why it's abounding one moment here I got one more visual I want to show you here before we move forward. One more visual. Let me take the time and play this one here because I want to I want you to hear this one too. Crime up 77%. Wow. Lawlessness. Let me share this one with you as well. It's only a couple of minutes. Rotate. Let's welcome to the show the ranking member of House Homeland Security. The congressman is also with Transportation and Infrastructure. He's Congressman John Katko. Congressman, it's great to have you on. We're going to show this disturbing video coming in. Arsonists tried to set on fire the offices of a GOP state representative in Washington state. It's rising crime like this, Congressman, and also inflation that's driving voters to the ballot box like they did in last night's prim primaries. Congressman. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, ma'am. I thought you could play the video. Yes. I mean, what's going on in uh, these uh, across the country? We've been seeing since uh, for the last year and a half, two years, when they changed the, uh, they they took the stance with police officers that are they're vilifying them. And then you have everything else going on with crime in the United States. And I, I think we have a, a, a very bad brew brewing this summer. And I'm very concerned about it. So, but then we have 27 Democrats who voted no to the legislation to increase security for families of Supreme Court justices. The alleged wannabe assassin of Justice Kavanaugh, he was officially indicted today. How would these Democrats feel about protesters showing up at their homes with their families inside? Well, first of all, Liz, going to, trying to influence uh, the proceedings of the federal judges is a crime in and of itself. So those protesters are actually committing crimes, and it's, it's amazing to me that this administration is not enforcing those crimes. And I was a federal Listen, folks, if a lawless person doesn't care about the law that his creator put out there for him to abide by, who is the judge? You see, lawlessness will abound and the love of many will grow cold. And this is another example. They're going out to the judges. You know, it's this it's is absolutely ridiculous it's lawlessness everyone let's rotate organized crime prosecutor for 20 years and lord knows i had a fair share of my threats and lord knows an awful lot of those people who threatened me went to jail and justifiably so so they can influence the process so what they're doing uh, by not influence uh, not, by not enforcing the laws 
is perpetuating this lawlessness that seems seems to be pervading uh, all of the United States right now. It's very, very troubling. And, and Congressman, you know, voters are sick and tired of it. You know, Caterpillar, the big company Caterpillar, is now moving its global headquarters <laughs> out of Chicago to the Dallas-Fort Worth area in Texas. That's a blow to Chicago. It's already lost Boeing's headquarters. We already have Tesla, Oracle, Hewlett-Packard moving to Texas from California, and hundreds of thousands leaving high crime, high inflation, high tax states like Illinois, New York, and California. Yeah, but listen, Caterpillar is like any other company. They have a, a duty to protect their employees, but they also have the duty to try and attract employees. And if it's a fact that they're having a problem in Chicago, as part of my head of the American Security Task Force, we went all over the country in the last six months to a year, and one of the places we went was Chicago. It was stunning the number of cops that were leaving. It was just stunning the number of officers who, who felt dispirited and felt like they were uh, caught adrift, that, that uh, the locals didn't have their backs, and the mayor there certainly doesn't. And it now you're seeing be manifested in the crime that's rampant in, your, in, in Chicago and all these major cities. And Congressman, in your home state of New York, you're going to see New York City Mayor Eric Adams. He's claiming he's not worried about what you just talked about, record level, levels of cops leaving. Watch this. Mr. Mayor, are you concerned there are reports that um, over 500 cops are resigning and over 1,000 are retiring? Does that concern you? Uh, no, it does not. How could he not be worried when voters are turning out against uh, crime in the defund police cities? Well, I can tell you right now, I've been in New York City many, many times, and I have a lot of friends on the law enforcement the community down there from my old days and from my, my current job. And I can tell you, they're dispirited. They have a DA who came into office the first day and issued a 10-page memo to, uh, outlining all the crimes he wasn't going to prosecute, crimes that run the books. And that sends a wrong message. And so these cops are dispirited. They're leaving, they're retiring, they're going to jurisdictions that are safer, and they're going to suburban uh, jurisdictions where they're retiring altogether. Well, and that's a heck of a trend. Trip. That's a heck of a trend. I, I did not, forgive me, I didn't mean to talk over you. And Congressman, you know, the FBI data may be understated on crime because 40% of police departments nationwide, including New York and L.A., they're so tied up they failed to report their crime data to the FBI last year. That's nearly 7,000 law enforcement agencies. And there's also this. Congressman Jim Banks, I want your take on this. He's asking the Biden Justice Department, why did the DOJ drop charges, arson charges, against a left-wing rioter? He's uh, then 19-year-old Victor Santa Santana, or Victor Sanchez Santa. He faced a maximum 20 years. He tried to set on fire an NYPD cop car during the 2020 riots. Now he's let off with nine months probation and anger management courses. Absolutely outrageous to me. Absolutely, because when, it, I, whether you're a seasoned criminal or someone who's maybe thinking about criminal conduct or someone who's just angry. Uh, one of the best things you can do for deterrent from them engaging in the conduct is to have enforcement of the laws. This has a cascading effect, and I can tell you from my time as a prosecutor, uh, it has a cascading effect. When you don't enforce laws, people aren't afraid. When people aren't yeah. afraid, they do really stupid things. And this is an example. Boom. They're not afraid. This is lawlessness. But guess what? Guess what we're talking about today? People are not afraid of y'all either. So what do they do? Continue to sin. Continue to transgress the law. Continue to be lawless. You see, lawlessness is abounding so much that police officers are retiring early or they moving out to the suburbs. They don't wanna be part of these inner cities anymore. Lawlessness will abound. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. Yahushua spoke about this. Those were just a couple of visuals that I thought I would show you guys, you know, to give you the percentages. Crime is up 77%. Wow. There's no need to be surprised. Matthew 24, he speaks about it being the sign. Well, let's get down into what is the cause of all of this lawlessness? Let's break it down a little bit more. Let's break it down a little bit more. Here we go. Next bullet point that, that, that I like to discuss with you. Let's read it. The Antichrist 
who is prophesied to appear in the end time, is described as a man of lawlessness. So you got these people running around committing crimes, looting, lawlessness. Well, guess where they get it from? Spirit of the Antichrist. No reverence for y'all at all. So now let's pull out a precept. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And let's read verses 8 through 10. All right. Where does this spirit of lawlessness come from? It comes from the Antichrist. And we're going to read the precept here. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 8 through 10. Let's read it. One moment here. Let me get to it. From Satan. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. So Satan is in charge of all of this. You get it? All of the lawlessness. With all powers, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteousness, Deception among those who perish because they do not receive the love of the truth they that they might be saved. So you don't want to hear about the commandments. You don't want to hear about Yah's law. You don't want to hear the truth. What's going to get you into the kingdom and how you can inherit the kingdom. But you're having fun committing lawlessness because these people are of their father the devil you get it second thessalonians chapter 2 verses 8 through 10 the coming of the lawless ones is according to the working of satan and that spirit of the antichrist has already hit the earth just watch the news Back to the commentary. So now, why is all of this lawlessness? Who is in control of this Satan? Now, the man of lawlessness, which is the Antichrist, his spirit's already hit the earth, but he hasn't been revealed yet. Daniel says, he will be a king who will do as he pleases. This is the Antichrist. Do as he pleases. No reverence to Yah's law. Lawlessness. I'm going to do as I please. Or as you can see as on those t-shirts as Jay-Z and all of them say, do as thy wilt. So who's, what spirit is controlling them? An Antichrist type spirit. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 36 speaks about it. He's going to do as he pleases. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 36. Let's pull out the precept. You don't believe it? Let's read it. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 36. One moment. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. I give a lot of precepts. Put them all together and we can get an understanding. Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 and 10 is where you can find precept upon precept. Daniel chapter 11 and verse uh, 36. Let's pull it out here. One moment. Here we go. All right. Let's read it. Daniel chapter 11, verse 36. Then the king shall do according to his own will. He shall exalt and magnify himself above every God, little g. Shall speak blasphemies against the Yah of gods, the God of gods, the Most High, and shall prosper till the wrath has been accomplished. For what has been determined shall be done. Let me read that again. Then the king shall do according to his own will. He shall exalt and magnify himself above every God shall speak blasphemies against the God of gods and shall prosper till the wrath has come, has been accomplished. 
for what has been determined shall be done. Now this was, to break this down even better, that king that they were talking about was Napoleon, the willful king, the king of France back then. Daniel was given a, 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 a parable. And if you do a lot of Bible study as I do, you would study and know that that was the willful king. Do as thou will. And that was uh, 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 Napoleon, the king of France then that he was talking about. He had that antichrist spirit. And so as you can see, this lawlessness has been abounding for a long time. But you see, in 2 Peter 3 and 8, the Most High says, one day is a thousand years. So to us, it seems like that was a long time ago. But to Yah, it's just like yesterday. Lawlessness will abound and the love of many will grow cold. Let's get back to the commentary. Do as I will is the spirit of the Antichrist. Where is this lawlessness coming from? From the spirit of the lawless one. That's hit the earth. Christ said that it would. The Antichrist will be one who knows who Yah is, but declares himself to be above Yah, just as Satan did. Is that not what Lucifer did in heaven when he was there? Precept. Let's turn to the book of Isaiah. So the Antichrist will be the one who knows who Yah is, but declares himself to be above Yah. So now we segue in into the spirit of the lawless one that's causing all these things to happen around the world. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 14. Let's bring it out. Let's bring out the precept. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 14. And it reads, this is what Lucifer says. I, let's, you know what? Let's start with uh, chapter th verse 13. For you have said in your heart, I will descend and ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of Yah. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the far farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. What a blasphemous statement. And this has come from Lucifer. He says, I will be like the most high. If you pay attention to this, each one of these statements starts with I, I, I. Let's go to another precept. First John chapter two and verse 22. Let's find out about this spirit of the Antichrist, this lawless spirit that's then hit the whole earth, not just America, but the earth. First John chapter two and verse 22. Let's read it. Who is a liar, but he who denies that Yahusha is the Christ. He is the Antichrist who denies the father and the son. You see the lawless one the son of perdition. He don't abide by no one rules, but his own. Isn't that the spirit that's going on here? To the point to where the cops can't even control things anymore. And see, if you, if you really, really do your Bible study, you will know that it's ushering in the one world order. It's ushering in the what? If the cops can't do it, guess who can? The military. It's called martial law, folks. Wake up. Martial law. Now listen to this. He is called lawless because he will refuse all authority and be completely given over to sin. Those who follow the Antichrist during the tribulation will follow him into lawlessness. Now, earlier, to their own destruction, 
Those who receive the mark will never be able to repent and find forgiveness, but will be tormented forever in the lake of fire. You don't believe it? Let's turn to the precept. Revelation 14, verses 9 and 10. Revelation 14, verses 9 and 10. Now in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10, Galatians 5, 20, 21, what did we talk about? We talked about the sins that, aka lawlessness, aka transgression of the law, these people will not inherit the kingdom of God. Revelation chapter, let's go back to the precept here, one second. I'm sorry, folks. With me, Revelation chapter 14, right after the three angels, the three angel message. Remember that Bible study that we did? Right after that three angel message, the warning. The three angels that came to the earth warning the people for one last time. He explains what happened to those people who follow Satan into lawlessness. Let's read it. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 and 10. Bring it out. Then the third angel, this was the third angel, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his march on his forehead or, or on his hand, he himself shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yah, which is poured out full strength into the cup of, of his indignation. He shall be tormented, tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb which is Yahushua, Christ, the Hamashiach, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. So if you practice in lawlessness, look at the list. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Read them out. Examine yourself. Go to Galatians chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. Are you fornicating? Are you committing adultery? Are you lying? Are you murdering? Are you st all of that? These are sins, which is lawlessness practicing. Let's get back to the commentary. We're going to drive this point into the ground. He who has to let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the people. Shema, O Israel. So if you practice in lawlessness during the tribulation time and you follow the son of perdition, the lawless one, into lawlessness, Revelation 14, 9 and 10 tells you what's going to happen. The third angel that came. You're going to go down. The full cup of Yah's wrath will be poured out upon you. Oh, who's able to stand from that? No one. Let's keep rolling. Now, segue into the love of many grow cold. The love of many will grow cold. Bullet point. Whether it is because of the influence of false teachers or the persecution of the fear of death, the zeal of many false professors will diminish. Their love towards Yah and towards the church will grow Cold. True love. True love. If you truly love Yah, your love is not going to grow cold against Yah or anyone else. True love cannot become cold because it's what? Sustained by Christ, who is able to keep us from falling. You. Chapter 1 and verse 24 and 25. You see, we don't give ourselves. Strength doesn't come from us, ourselves. It comes from Christ. It comes from the Most High. It comes from the Ruach, HaKadosh. Okay? So now let's read this precept in Jude, the book of Jude. One moment. 
chapter 1, and let's read verses 24 and 25. One moment, we are there. So, if you truly love y'all, first of all, you're going to examine yourself. And you're going to ask him to take out anything that is out of this temple that is not of him. Take out any iniquity that is not of you, y'all. Confess that sin to one another. And he'll help you. You'll no longer be lawless. And you'll be a law abider. Following the commandments. Keeping his laws and his statutes. All right. So let's read uh, Jude uh, 24 and 25. Now listen to this. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. You see, if you don't get in your word, if you don't pray, and if you don't have those conversations with the Most High, with Yahusha and the Ruach, you're going to stumble. You're going to fall short. You're going to. Verse 24 says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To Yah our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. You see, he is the only one that can keep us from stumbling. But people, you have to understand that the Most High is a gentleman. And he's not going to force his laws, his statutes upon no one. You see, salvation is a choice. Whether you want to live lawlessness, you want to practice lawlessness, you want to practice sin, you want to transgress the law, or do you want to practice righteousness and inherit the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of Yah, which is coming down to the earth. And it won't come here until this one is destroyed. You have to make a choice. Whose side are you on? Are you on the lawless one side? Are you on the creator's side? The one and only true Elohim. Our Abba, Yahuwah. Yahuwah. Let's get back to the commentary. Let's make the right decisions, folks. Yah is the only one that can keep you from stumbling. That can keep your love from growing colder and colder. Because he only provides true love. It doesn't come from a man or woman. It comes from the Most High that created you. You see how we love our children? Because they come from us. Well, Yah is our father. He's our creator. He truly loves us, not Satan, not the devil. He's the father of lies. If he tells you he loves you, it's a lot from the pit of hell. Next bullet point. Now listen to this. For those without the Ruach HaKadosh, however, what love they do have will become colder and colder in the last days. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, the Wura dwelling in your temple, it's going to be sad for those people. Now listen, Paul expands this idea in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1 through 4. Let's read what Paul says. 2 Timothy, uh, take a minute, and turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And let's read verses 1 through 4. We're about to wrap up this Bible study here. When will the end be? Break down on Matthew 24. Right now, 24, verse 12. And lawlessness will abound, and the love of many will grow cold. 
Let's read what Paul says. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Now listen to this. But know this, that in the last days, we're in the last days. And this is what Paul was talking about. And the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write this then. About now. Amazing, isn't it? But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiven, slanderous without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of Yah, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Selfish ambitions, lovers of money, lovers of themselves, rather than lovers of Christ, lovers of the Most High. You see, he expands on it, a different characteristics of the people that are lawless or that's practicing lawlessness. These other spirits come right along with the lawlessness. The blasphemers, the proud, the bolsters, the love of the money, love themselves, disobedient the parents, all of these considered sins, practicing of lawlessness. You see what I'm saying? Paul expounded. He expanded the horizon on these characteristics. You see? He described the last days. Is that not what's going on? Nobody cares about nobody anymore. You can hardly find a person that cares. Go in the grocery store or go in the store and try to return something or go in the fast food line. And you'll see that. Let's move on. The love those people have is not warm living love for yah and his truth or and his people see the people in the end time in the last days the lawless people these are no other characteristics of the perilous times lovers of themselves that's not what love warm love of the money that's not loving yah next bullet point Now, how can we be sure that the love we have for Christ will never grow cold? How can we be sure? How can we be sure, folks? We begin by examining ourselves to be sure we are truly in the faith. And let's read the precept. Turn with me, if you will, to 2 Corinthians, because this is where true repentance starts. A self-examination. Confession. Repenting. Praying out to the Most High for help. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. How can we know? by examining ourselves. Now listen to the precept here. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Yahusha is in you? Christ? Unless indeed you are disqualified. But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Now listen to this. This is how you can be sure. Teshuvah in Hebrew means repentance, true repentance, right? Look at yourself in the mirror and examine yourself. Can you examine yourself 
with 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10? Can you examine yourself against Galatians chapter 5, verses 20 and 21? Have you confessed to the Most High that, you know, I am practicing sin. I'm boastful. I'm loving the money, all this and the other. I'm practicing lawlessness. There's hope, brothers and sisters. The only way that the Holy Spirit can dwell in your temple, it has to be clean. It has to be swept out and all of the lawlessness replaced with the word. Right back to the beginning. In the beginning was the word. The word was Yah and the word was with Yah. You go back to the beginning. You repent, turn, and change. Not following the lawless one, the son of perdition, and what the world is doing, but you following the law, statute, and commandments that our creator, Father Yahuwah, gave us to abide by. This is how you can be sure. And the Holy Spirit, Christ, the Ruah, all will come dwell in your temple. Because it's clean and they can abide there. You get it? This is how we can be sure. If we truly belong to Christ, we can be confident that we possess the love from the Ruach that never grows cold. Then we should make every effort to increase our love. Today's Bible study. When would the end be? Another sign that Christ gave, lawlessness. The love of many would grow cold. Mothers are turning against daughters. Sons against fathers. Mother-in-laws against daughter-in-laws. Son-in-laws against father-in-laws. It's sad, but it's true. Yahushua said that this would be a sign when the end would be. Brothers and sisters, I want you to take a minute to pray. To allow your heart to not be hardened and continue to practice sin and transgress the law and practice lawlessness. Examine yourselves. And as if it's anything that is not, any iniquity that is keeping you from inheriting the kingdom, I pray right now in the name of Yahusha that you are released and that you come to the true and saving knowledge of who Christ really is. In the name of Yahusha. When would the end be? Break down on Matthew 24. Today was lawlessness will abound. And the love of many will grow cold. See you next week. For part 10. The water for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. Y'all bless.